In this video, we will start discussing about the main introductory components of the subject of refrigeration and air conditioning and we will abbreviate this subject as REC. Okay. So before I go ahead and discuss more about the subject, let's understand the major components of a refrigeration circuit. We have already covered what a, what a refrigerator is that you know you are extracting heat from a low temperature source by having some work input and rejecting heat to a high temperature source. Okay, so the main components, the first component is the compressor. So you have a fluid which is coming out of the compressor. So the fluid which is used to extract heat from a given substance is called a refrigerant. Alright, so the refrigerant is coming out of the compressor, goes into the condenser, the individual working and the individual uses of these things we will discuss in a bit and then from condenser the refrigerant goes into the expansion valve and then from expansion valve it goes into the evaporator or the refrigerated space okay and then from this it goes back into the compressor so this is a very very simplistic view of how a refrigeration circuit looks like okay now our study is mainly based upon the uh, or from the reference of the thermodynamic changes that come into the working fluid that we call the refrigerant okay now in the evaporator you are keeping the substance that you want to cool okay but we are not you know uh, you are, we are not basing our study we are not basing our analysis on the substance we want to cool we are basing it on the substance which cools it that is the refrigerant okay now one thing more the compressor cannot handle vapor uh, liquid it has to handle vapor because liquids are incompressible okay so whatever which is going into the compressor has to be completely vaporized so i will write down over here that you have vapor which is going into the compressor this means that you have vapor coming out of the evaporator okay now when the vapor go the condition of the vapor which is coming out of the evaporator and going into the compressor we'll just wait there for the condition to be explained now from compressor this vapor gets compressed the pressure gets high and the temperature also gets high so the state of the vapor which comes out of the compressor is very hot and at very high pressure so this is hot and high pressure vapor okay now this hot and high pressure vapor this goes into the condenser now what happens in the condenser it condenses condensation takes place so we maintain the same pressure so what is coming out of the condenser is hot high pressure liquid your pressure is high because we are not allowing the pressure to drop across the condenser okay and also and this is hypothetical also because there is a phase change so we are losing the latent heat so the temperature remains the same okay now this hot high pressure liquid goes into the expansion valve where this expands and upon expansion the pressure drops and so is the temperature so this becomes cold low pressure liquid okay now this very low temperature low pressure liquid is about to enter this evaporator space where the object that you want to cool or the substance you want to cool is let us say this or these are the substances you want to cool so when this cold low pressure liquid will flow through this piping inside the evaporator because it's very cold okay it will absorb heat it will absorb heat from this substance okay so the substance is losing heat and will eventually become cold that is what you want to have and this 
evaporator uh, this this refrigerant which is entering the evaporator will become hot okay now you have liquid at the entrance to the evaporator but at the exit you have vapor form this means that the refrigerant which is entering the evaporator has to be completely vaporized that is why we call it the evaporator also evaporator from the perspective of the refrigerant so this cold low pressure liquid gets converted into warm low pressure vapor warm why because there will be some heat will be taken up by this vapor okay and this enters the compressor and the rest is history so this is how this cycle actually works okay now the idea behind a compressor and the evaporator and the expansion valve is now understood compressor compresses the vapor this you know expands the hot liquid to reduce the pressure and eventually the temperature because the volume stays the same okay and then the evaporator where the heat exchange takes place between the substance to be cooled and the refrigerant now what is the use of the condenser why do we have condenser over there okay the purpose of condenser is to convert this vapor into the liquid okay why because because the you can say latent heat of vapor the latent heat of vapor is high as compared to latent heat of liquid okay we'll just touch upon the concept of latent heat on this diagram in a moment okay so when you are reducing or when you are converting vapor to liquid you are basically losing this high latent heat so when you lose the latent heat into the atmosphere you are actually all set up to absorb heat because liquid has low latent heat it absorbs it, it is now able to absorb more heat because you have already lost the chunk of the heat content to the atmosphere okay so this is what it does the condenser okay now after this let's understand the concept of latent heat and sensible heat so we'll uh, take a graph of temperature and heat axis you increase the heat and you increase the temperature okay initially you have minus 10 degree celsius of ice so as you give heat the temperature will rise after some time the temperature is attained at 0 degree and it is still ice the phase is not changing but the temperature has gone up or the temperature changes there so the amount of heat added in this much instance is called sensible heat so sensibility is heat is that heat in which the temperature change occurs but the phase change does not occur now in moving from this 0 degree celsius ice to 0 degree celsius water there is no temperature change but there is a phase change from ice to water so whatever heat that we have added or taken out is called latent heat okay now we go from 0 degree celsius water to 100 degree celsius water again temperature change but no phase change so it becomes sensible heat and again this becomes latent heat and whatever you heat add after that it is all sensible heat okay so this is what it is now the formula mathematical formula for sensible heat is mc delta t because there is a delta t involved in sensible heat the latent heat is equal to m into l now what is l l is the specific latent heat of the substance you all know this and a very common thing is l of i is approximately 335 kilo joule per kg okay now this is a very brief introduction to it now as we talk about the refrigerant and the thermodynamic changes it goes uh, through 
the amount of heat to be extracted in the evaporator how much heat how much heat has to be taken up by the refrigerant or how much cooling has to be provided by the refrigerant that extent is called the refrigeration capacity the refrigeration capacity okay or or refrigeration effect refrigeration effect now the refrigeration effect is a physical quantity so we need a unit we need units to describe this and the units to describe the refrigeration effect are tr that is ton of refrigeration okay so in common practice we just say uh, one ton two ton of refrigeration but that is not ton only that is ton of refrigeration it is tr okay now one tr how do you define one tr let's have a look at that so let us say you have a room over here okay and inside the room you have some ice okay and this ice the mass of this ice is 1 ton okay and this ice is at 0 degree celsius now it will start melting now how will it melt it will melt by taking heat from the surrounding air and as the surrounding air loses heat to the ice the air becomes cooler okay the cooling starts to take place now the amount of heat that is needed to completely melt one ton of ice at zero degree to one ton of water at zero degree and this has to be done in 24 hours this much amount of heat absorbed from the air is called 1 tr or 1 ton of refrigeration that is the amount of heat absorbed by the ice to melt completely from 0 degree celsius ice to 0 degree celsius water in 24 hours this means the phase change has taken place but we are not talking about temperature change so we are talking about latent heat so to have a numerical value 1 tr in terms of kilojoule per minute or kilowatts will use the latent heat okay so 1 tr is equal to the amount of heat extracted that is ml m into l upon 24 hours into 60 that is kilojoule per minute so this would be 1 tr 1 ton is how much a thousand kg now this is hypothetical in actual we use one short turn one short turn is less than one ton okay so, so the exact value is around 991 kg but for just defining purposes we use one ton to be a thousand kg so m into 335 by 24 into 60 so this would give you approximately 233 kilojoule per minute so this is theoretical for practical purposes we know that we are using one short ton not one one ton but one short ton which is less than a thousand kg so for practical calculations one tr is equal to 3.5 kilowatt and this would amount to 210 kilojoule per minute so this is what you will be using for your numerical practice this is just for the sake of definition okay so i hope you got a very good idea about what this subject is all about the main components the specific heat latent heat and the definition of the uh, units of refrigeration that is ton of refrigeration now after having an introduction about the subject of rse now let's move on to the next video and talk about the reversed carnot cycle